Greetings, my friends. Maryland, once again, continuing the spectacle of perspicuity turn by turn commentary. I'm going to try to punch off three turns in this video. The turns are very simple now. I don't think it's required that I go into all the great detail. But let's have a quick look at my research. I've completed my target alteration three for if we hit the S key, body ethereal. Now I'm moving on to my next key target, which is Conjuration 4. Three key spells in Conjuration 4 I'm targeting. Power of the Spheres, extremely useful for communions, especially reverse communions. Light of the Northern Star, important for Astral Magi and also in communions. And then, in the water, Voice of Tiamat, the core of my sight searching strategy. I'll use Voice of Tiamat to find all of the elemental sites in the water. This gives me fire, fire gem income and air gem income potentially, which I would not otherwise be able to get without Pretender or some major diversity later on. A very useful spell, I normally consider it worth the eight water gems per cast. I'm continuing to patrol. We need not discuss that in detail. I've got some armies moving to take the city of goons. Surprisingly enough, it's still not taken. I think Sati is working towards it, but they might end up too late. We'll see. Everybody's set, everybody's ready, research is moving on happily. I've got more forts going. I'm going to fort every province. I've got temples coming, forts here coming in Sea of Span, temple coming, then I'll move on to fort the Lovecraftian Sea. So I think the last thing to cover in turn 17 is what's the state of the world? Well, Elheim's holding, Sati is holding, Tianchi is holding, and I'm holding. I'm doing well on forts. Income is reasonable. Gem income, well, Helheim got a major early start on gem income. He's got very good capital magi and non-capital magi for sight searching. Research, yes, I'm very behind, not much I can do. Dominion, it's very good. And army size, of course I'm ramping up. Well, I see that my opponents are also building up some armies. So perhaps the next turn, which we're going to get to right now, is going to see some more action. Turn number 18. In turn number 18, first bits of conjuration done, continuing the patrolling, and I have gotten the army ready for attacking the city of goons. I've got a little bit of a glitch. One of the polypels is stuck in the squad with the gibbidae, and I didn't notice that when I went to make the changes for the turn, but that's okay. It's really not going to make much difference. No orders. Let them shoot what they want. Big packs of polypel in the back. Little tiny squads of polypel up front to soak up arrows and following up behind some hard-hitting slave guardians. So simple enough. We'll see how that develops next turn. I'm continuing to recruit mothers wherever possible up to my target of six per fort. And I've started another fort. That's where my money went. So we'll see what happens after that. Oh, I think I misspoke. I didn't start up that other fort. I bought a few magi. And currently I just have two laboratories. So turn 18's quiet, a continuation of the same. Let's move on to turn number 19. Turn number 19, I remember from previous looking over that there's some action. So some site searching, manual searching as expected, an unexpected event, nothing too important, but a battle. Well, I won. We could go into detail on reviewing it. I'll watch it for a little bit, just see the action. We zoom in, and we should see that blast away with the mind blasts, a divine blessing, of course. I brought my prophet along, a handy thing. So, the formation of the Ictiids is falling apart already, and that's a good thing. That's going to cut down my casualties in a significant way. Now, frustratingly, Fetalith here is rushing forward, but he is doing some enslaving. You can see from his animation that it's working. You can also see that the nets of the Ictiad lights are hitting Polybell spawn. Well, that's fine with me. They can go ahead and waste those nets on 
crap free spawn. And uh, my slave guardians are slowly working around. So I think it's really not necessary that we follow through this entire battle. We could go take a look at the results at the end. And if we look down, there we go. A few Ictiads got enslaved, and I put them in my armies. And I've left the commander with the amphibious troops sitting here and doing patrolling. This is a nice, juicy province. 21,000 population. I've, I'm overtaxing, even with the unrest. I'm sure the overcax will come down right away. And I'm sending the Avaleth and Mine Lord back to do research. In the statistics, there's some action. In the provinces, we can see Tianqi looks like attacked Sati. I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Helheim seems to be grabbing the odd leftover province. I'm not doing much. Forts, we know what's happening there. Research, we know what's happening there. But it would be nice to see what's happening between those two nations. However, there are no independent underwater scouts, so I'm stuck waiting until I have free fort turns and free cash to get scouts. Army size, well, those battles between Chen Chi and Siti must not have been too brutal because their armies are ramping up rapidly. Uh, yes, you can see definitely Chen Chi lost some already searched province. Or, sorry, Siti lost it to Chen Chi. Under income, no major action. So I think that pretty much covers what's happening in the world on turn number 19. Keep tuned to this channel for turn number 20, 21, dot, 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 dot. You know what I mean. And I hope to see you in game, my friends. Have a good one.